It is that time of year to do another list of the top 50 favorite roller coasters that I have ever ridden. As time goes on, I find myself giving more weight to my personal experiences and less weight on how objectively good a ride is. I feel that this is the way we should all rank our coasters because it's our own unique experiences and preferences that make these lists interesting. What that also means is that you will disagree with plenty on my list, but that's actually a good thing. I enjoy everything about coasters, but my absolute favorites tend to have either strong ejector airtime, aggressive and fast paced elements, intensity, or speed. A great setting with beautiful views helps as well as when a ride offers variety. If I've been able to get plenty of laps because of short lines, that will also provide a boost. I am currently sitting at an even 600 coaster credits, so this list is within my top 10% overall. I have visited Canada's Wonderland and most of the notable parks in the United States, except for these. I've said it before that I'm not the biggest fan of B&M, so even though I still like them, they won't rank as high for me as they do for others. Here is my list of manufacturers. The parentheses are because clones will only take up one spot, and you can see that Intamin has sort of taken over the top spot. Here are the states that are represented, and it's not surprising that the best six states for coasters are my top six, but it was surprising to me to see Florida now at the top. Nine of my top 50 are wood, which is right in line with my overall percentage, and Six Flags still holds a good lead over Cedar Fair. So let's get right into it with number 50, which is Batwing the Vacoma Flyer at Six Flags America. This is probably the best layout for any flyer in the country, and it's very smooth and intense. 49 is the defunct Vortex at Kings Island. I'm still holding on to the great memories of riding this with other Vortex fans in 2019. The airtime on the drop in the back car was amazing, then the rest of the ride was a great mix of intensity and hang time, and it rode smooth in the back car. 48 is Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. This ride saw a big jump after my November trip, when it was almost a walk-on all week, allowing me to fully appreciate how great it really is. Riding towards the front gives the best moment of airtime in the entire park as you rise up the Windcatcher Tower. It's not a super intense ride, but the fun factor is off the charts. 47 is Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. This is Intamin's take on a Gerslauer Eurofighter, and they did it better. Great inversions, plus a couple moments of very strong airtime, and it's a glossy smooth ride. 46 is Gold Striker at California's Great America. It has the rapid fire elements and quick airtime pops that GCI Woodies are known for. Get out here and ride this while you can. I think it's the best GCI layout, but there is one that I like more. 45 is Twisted Cyclone, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags Over Georgia. It's my least favorite non-Raptor RMC, but it is still a great ride with strong airtime, great inversions, and one of the better drops despite the smaller size. The short ride duration holds it down a little. 44 is Joker, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This one is underrated as it's a very unique and interesting layout. It has a nice mix of great airtime and inversions, and it's a longer ride. 43 is New Texas Giant, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags over Texas. The original RMC has some elements that don't quite hit, but overall it's a great ride with some moments of strong airtime. It is one of the more inconsistent RMCs, running slow and weak at times, but the long ride duration holds it up. 42 is the Mr. Freeze clones at Six Flags Over Texas and St. Louis. Texas has theirs launching forward again, which isn't as good as a backwards launch, and the spike gives better views in St. Louis, but both versions give an equally intense ride with a strong 70 mile an hour launch, a crazy inverted top hat, and the return run is even faster. I have a 20 year history with this ride and it's once again my favorite in both parks. 41 is Poltergeist at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, another underrated premier launch coaster. It has a great launch, some moments of extreme intensity mixed with all the crazy head choppers, all building to a great conclusion. The new theming adds so much to what was already one of the most fun coasters I have ever ridden. 40 is Kumba, the B&M sit down at Busch Gardens Tampa. This features seven inversions, and it's one of the most intense coasters that B&M ever made, which I appreciate. It may be too much for some people, but I totally love it. Some trains do ride smoother than others. For 39, we're staying at Busch Gardens Tampa for Montu, the B&M invert. Also with seven inversions and also very intense, this is by far my favorite invert I've ever ridden. 
Year after year, I keep flip-flopping between Montu and Kumba for my favorite ride in the park, but now they're fighting for second place. Number 38 is Lightning Run, the Chance Hyper GTX at Kentucky Kingdom. Despite the small size, this packs a punch with some very strong airtime and fast-paced rapid-fire elements. I hope to see plenty more of these start popping up around the country and the world. 37 is Manta, the B&M Flyer at SeaWorld Orlando. It may not be as intense as Batwing, but it's a long-time sentimental favorite of mine. I love how it flies over pathways, over the water, and past waterfalls, and the Aquarium Q really gets you hyped up for your ride. Number 36 is Time Traveler, the mock extreme spinning coaster at Silver Dollar City. My season pass last year allowed me to get plenty more rides on this and I grew to love it more than ever. Every ride is different because of the controlled spinning and that drop is crazy when riding in the back car. It may not be super intense, but it is so much fun. 35 is Storm Runner, the Intamin launch coaster at Hershey Park. This has a very strong hydraulic launch to start out, then a more complete layout follows with airtime, inversions, and hang time. It's a bit of a short ride, but not as short as what's coming up next. 34 is Top Thrill Dragster, the defunct Intamin Stratocoaster from Cedar Point. We don't yet know what will be different with this ride in 2024, but this ranking is based on what it was before. It was a short, simple layout, but that launch to 120 miles an hour was so powerful, and the top hat gave the most amazing view. Then it would give some great airtime and laterals on the drop. The poor operating procedures and frustrations were a big issue, and let's hope that those get better with whatever happens to this. 33 is King Daka, the better intimate strata coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is a noticeably stronger launch, reaching 128 miles an hour in a shorter time. It's the tallest coaster in the world at 456 feet, and it finishes off with a big speed hill, which gives some decent airtime, and it's not actually very shaky. The restraints don't bother me at all, and I've had much better luck with reliability and very short lines with this one. 32 is Hades 360, the Gravity Group Woody at Mount Olympus. I haven't ridden this in four years, but I hear it's gotten so much rougher since, and it was quite rough back then. I could barely tolerate it, and the recent reports have me dropping this in my rankings because I don't want to ride it again until they smooth it out. But if they do, this could be the best wooden coaster in the country with one of the best pre-lift sections in the world, a drop into the longest underground tunnel in the world, rising up on the other side of the parking lot with an inversion and then returning. It has great airtime and intensity throughout, but if you go here, brace yourself for a very rough ride. 31 is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, my favorite B&M hyper. It's one of the smoothest B&Ms, making it so rewritable. It gives the best floater to mild ejector airtime, and there is plenty of it too. That five second sustained Camelback Hill is my favorite airtime moment on any B&M, and the operations here usually keep the line short. Number 30 goes to Steel Curtain at Kennywood, the SNS with nine inversions more than any other coaster in the country. I had so much fun with this ride as they kept the line short all day, allowing for plenty of rides. It's one of the smoothest coasters I've ever ridden, especially considering the crazy speed it has. It has some intense moments, perfect transitions, air time, and hang time, making it one of the most complete coasters in the country, even if it isn't the best at any one thing. My experience seems to not be what most people get with this ride, but I base my rankings on my experiences, and this was one of the best I've had with any ride. 29 is Gatekeeper, the B&M wing coaster at Cedar Point. I'm in the minority with enthusiasts in that I totally love wing coasters. Gatekeeper is such a beautiful ride, and the beachside setting is gorgeous, and it's one of the smoothest coasters ever made by B&M. It gives some air time and hang time, and it has some intense moments as well. 28 is Thunderbird at Holiday World. It's a close call, but this is my favorite B&M wing coaster. It is overall more intense, with a strong launch to start out, and the great pacing going out into the woods, then it ends with a great near-miss element. 27 is Goliath, the RMC Woody at Six Flags Great America. It is a somewhat short ride, but it has top quality elements with a great first drop, a couple strong airtime moments, and two of the best inversions in the world, including the best zero-G stall that I've ever experienced. 26 is Fury 325, the B&M Giga Coaster at Carowinds. This is my favorite B&M, mostly because of the crazy speed that it's able to maintain. The second half has a few good airtime moments as well. 
I've gotten rough and smooth rides on this, but this ranking is based on my smooth rides. If you like B&M more than me, which most people do, then you'll rank this higher. I clearly don't fully get the hype for this ride though. Number 25 is the Superman Ride of Steel clones at Six Flags America and Darien Lake. These intimate hypers might be a simple layout, but they are executed so well. It has a great sense of speed throughout, which the straight track actually serves to highlight, which then leads to one of the strongest airtime moments on any coaster, and it ends with a series of great ejector airtime. Six Flags America's version has the better setting going out into the woods, and it seemed to ride faster for me. This has been more consistently smooth for me than Fury, and it has more airtime and stronger airtime than Fury. 24 is Prowler, the GCI Woody at Worlds of Fun. My second most ridden coaster ever has almost always delivered great airtime for me, highlighted by that amazing triple down in the second half. I love how it goes off into the woods, cutting through the trees, which makes for a great night ride. The twisting and rapid fire elements make this feel so out of control and it has the perfect amount of roughness. It was my number one when I first rode it in 2011 and my personal history with it will always have it ranked high. 23 is Boardwalk Bullet, the Gravity Group Woody at the Kima Boardwalk outside Houston. I'm amazed how they were able to cram so much coaster in such a tiny plot of land right up against the water. It is a long ride and gives plenty of floater and ejector airtime throughout and it runs quite smooth. It utilizes its own structure better than any other coaster. 22 is Monster, the Gerslauer Infinity Coaster at Adventureland in Iowa. This underrated gem gives incredible ejector airtime on the drop, then several of the inversions and even some of the non-inverting elements will give the best hang time of any coaster in the country. It is a very smooth and long ride with great restraints and a nice light package at night. 21 is Phantom's Revenge, the Morgan Hyper at Kennywood. You get an amazing view before plunging into the river valley. It is one of the smoothest coasters anywhere for that amount of speed and the ending series of bunny hills gives some of the craziest ejector airtime you'll find anywhere. And who doesn't love those awesome restraints? 20 is Ravine Flyer 2, the Gravity Group Woody at Waldemere. This has my favorite view at the top of any lift hill looking out over Lake Erie. Then the ride has plenty of great floater and ejector airtime as it dives down the ravine multiple times. Like the previous Gravity Group Woodies on this list, it loses steam at the end, but overall, it's one of the best and most underrated Woodies in the country. 19 is Millennium Force, the iconic Intamin Giga at Cedar Point. It has such a beautiful setting by the water. It's my favorite of all the Giga drops, and then you have an intense turnaround, which often causes me to gray out, and I don't gray out much. The sense of speed throughout this long ride is incredible, which is its greatest strength. The airtime isn't the strongest, but it does mix in a few airtime moments. Some people overrate this, many people underrate it. Number 18 is El Toro, the Intamin Woody at Six Flags Great Adventure. This may be a bit overrated with the rough spots and midsection that doesn't do much and a weak ending, but it is still one of the best Woodies in the country. During the great moments, it is very smooth. The drop, the following two hills, and the rolling thunder hill provide some very powerful and sustained ejector airtime. 17 is Twisted Colossus, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags Magic Mountain. A dueling ride is better, but even when it doesn't, it is still amazing. You get plenty of variety with strong ejector airtime, twisted airtime, and inversions, and you get to ride both sides without getting off, which makes for a long ride. 16 is Outlaw Run, the RMC Woody at Silver Dollar City. My season pass last year had me getting plenty of laps on this, and I think this is the most complete layout of any wooden coaster in the country. It has floater, ejector, twisted, and sideways airtime, plus hang time. It is a very intense ride, and I love how it goes out into the woods, making for maybe my favorite night ride on any coaster. It can ride a bit rough, especially in wheel seats, and the restraints can come down tighter as it goes. Without those flaws, this would be in my top 10. 15 is Pantheon, the new for 2022 Intamin launch coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Finally, this park has an elite coaster. You get hang time on the first inversion, then the swing launch sequence provides crazy airtime throughout. Then you get more great airtime on the rest of the ride with the top hat, outer bank, and my second favorite zero G stall, giving perfect upside down floater airtime. Sitting low to the track helps make this a perfectly smooth ride and everyone will love these restraints. That's not the case with the next one on my list, which is Sky Rush at Hershey Park coming in at number 14. This intimate hyper will crush your legs and it can ride shaky, 
but neither of those things bother me on my most recent rides in 2021. This has some of the most violent ejector airtime you'll find on any coaster. It is a fast pace and amazing layout that leaves me in awe after every ride. I think it's the most intense ride I have ever ridden. 13 is Maverick, the Intamin launch coaster at Cedar Point. This hits that sweet spot for intensity. It is such a brilliant layout with so much variety with the ejector airtime, rapid fire transitions, twisted airtime, inversions, and great speed with the strong mid-course launch. Number 12 is Voyage, the Gravity Group Woody at Holiday World in Indiana. This may not have the strongest airtime in the world, but there is so much of it, as it's one of the longest coasters in the world, and with only one lift hill, it has the most non-stop prime ride time of almost any coaster in the world. It's one of the best night rides anywhere, and my best rides on it came on a night that wasn't Hollywood Nights, so I don't even think it matters whether the mid-course is on or off. It could sometimes ride a bit rough, but the park does a great job taking care of this. 11 is Intimidator 305, the Intamin Giga at King's Dominion. One of the most intense coasters in the world with a turn that makes many people gray out. And those low to the ground turns at such high speeds are insane. Plus, this has more airtime moments and far stronger airtime than any of the other Giga coasters in North America. It may be too intense for some people to enjoy, but this is my kind of ride. Number 10 is Wicked Cyclone, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags, New England. Despite the smaller size, this delivers hang time and so much strong airtime, whether it be floater, ejector, or off-axis airtime. It also made me gray out on the first turn. It has great variety, and it's a very long ride. It rode great for me in 2019, as even the final few elements were delivering strong ejector airtime. Number 9 is also at Six Flags, New England. It is Superman the Ride, the Intamin Hyper. This is one of the most complete, non-inverting coasters in the world with an amazing layout and so much variety. It has a beautiful setting on the Connecticut River, plenty of strong ejector and floater airtime, and I love the brilliant spaghetti bowl section. It is a smooth ride with lap bar restraints that I actually love, although some people don't like them for some reason. Now my top eight are my absolute top tier coasters. The order of these can change quite easily. Number 8 goes to Storm Chaser, the RMC at Kentucky Kingdom, another smaller size RMC that is extremely powerful. This has some of the strongest ejector and off-axis airtime of any coaster I've ridden. It's not a long ride, but it's very aggressive with a unique and quirky layout. And I love how this rarely gets a long line. Number 7 is X2, the Aero 4D Wing Coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. One of the most intense coasters anywhere, and it's the only one like it on this side of the planet. It has controlled flipping, so you'll be switching between facing backwards, forwards, on your belly, on your back, on the left side or right side of the track. It has some unique airtime, and it's total madness throughout. I think I somewhat desensitized myself to it, riding it so much on my visits, but it is still among my favorites of all time. Number six is Velocicoaster, the Intamin launch coaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Orlando. It has great theming in the queue and the first half of the ride, flying through the Raptor paddock with airtime and inversions. The second half has greater speed, larger elements, more airtime and inversions, ending with that Mosasaurus roll over the water, giving upside down ejector airtime. With the theming, variety, and quality of elements, it's kind of the perfect roller coaster, so I can understand this being anybody's favorite. But there are a few that I've had more fun on. Number five is Lightning Rod, the RMC hybrid at Dollywood. That uphill launch is always exciting, and then you have sideways and twisted airtime on the other side of the mountain, which is pitch black at night. And the ride ends with that amazing quad down, giving rapid fire strong ejector airtime as you careen down the mountain as the park comes into view, which looks great during Christmas time at night. A year ago, I criticized this ride, knocking it far down my list as my 2021 rides were quite weak. They did have it running slow for a short time then, but my 2022 rides were back to full strength, which is why it shot back up my list. I still wish the restraints didn't come down tighter, and I wish it had a little more variety, but that setting can't be beat. Number four is Iron Gwazi, the new for 2022 RMC hybrid at Busch Gardens Tampa. It's like a greatest hits album from RMC as many of the best elements from other rides can be found in some way on this one. 
and it's among the strongest airtime that you'll find on any coaster with strong sustained ejector and quick ejector pops plus it's very intense with a couple gray out moments i met some great people here and visiting on school days had this usually with a short line or no line allowing me to ride it as much as i want number three is steel vengeance the rmc hybrid at cedar point this has plenty of variety and it's a very, very long ride. The first half has the larger elements with sustained ejector airtime, big inversions, and quick airtime pops. The second half has smaller elements with plenty more airtime, more inversions, and it does many of those elements while surrounded by the wooden structure. This ride seems to never end, but unfortunately your wait in line seems to never end, making it tough to get a lot of rides. But it's always worth the wait and I often meet some great people while waiting in line. Number two is Twisted Timbers, the RMC hybrid at King's Dominion. It may not be as tall or fast as the previous three RMCs, but it makes up for it by having the strongest airtime that I have felt on any coaster. It is so violent, so aggressive, so relentless, and it's a long ride with no mid-course brake run. I can understand that this is too much for some people. It has 20 airtime moments, most being strong ejector and off-axis airtime, a trick track double up and three floater inversions for some variety. My weekday visits have never seen this with much of a line, so I've been able to ride this as much as my body can handle. And my number one favorite roller coaster that I have ever ridden is indeed Iron Rattler, the RMC hybrid at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. My experiences with this ride cannot be matched as I've met some great people, found short lines at times, had ERT sessions, and I always have the best time at this park. Plus, it is one of the best rides in the country, featuring strong ejector, floater, and sideways airtime. It has my favorite first drop, as it's a twisted drop, giving laterals with the ejector airtime. And even the section on top of the quarry wall gives standing ejector airtime and sideways hang time. And then you have that big drop towards the end of the ride. Plus, these are my favorite trains and favorite restraints on any coaster, and this is the smoothest coaster in the world, making it one of the most rewritable coasters anywhere. And it is my most written coaster of all by quite a bit. It's also the ride that awoke my passion for coasters and amusement parks. So it has had a bigger impact on me than any other ride. If I were only allowed to ride one coaster for the rest of my life, I would pick Iron Rattler. It may not be the objective best coaster in the world, but it is still one of the best, and my personal experience then elevates it to my number one spot. So that'll do it for my list. And for my fellow statistics nerds, here is the breakdown of the parks that are represented on this list. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you thought of my list and what your personal favorites are. I always love to hear about other people's experiences and preferences as well. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.